Okay, let's take a look at how most people begin to draw carbon and hydrogen based molecules. They usually start off by drawing everything a bit like this, which is all very 2D and flat and quite simply wrong. So what we need to do is try and add a bit of a 3D shape to all of this because as your teacher may have told you carbon can have four bonds usually but we need to make them look a little bit more tetrahedral and just in case your teacher does like you to know this quite a lot of the examiners do the angle between all of these bonds is 109 or 109.5 to be exact and what we need to do is try and incorporate this sort of structure into this to make it look a little bit more 3D. So what we can start doing, start off with the carbon and then we draw another carbon attached to it and then another. And this, as you'll notice, has got the same sort of angle what it's supposed to look like it has as here. And so of course if we take this further again and draw wedges for the hydrogens like so we have something that looks like that which if you draw across then that looks a bit familiar to this and the wedges here look very similar to that so we've only really twisted this round by about 90 degrees or something so we've got this now all we need to do is continue on with this now you're thinking, right, that's all very easy. You draw these hydrogens opposite these two. But how do you draw the hydrogen correctly? Do you put the hydrogen down here and then draw the wedges up there? Well, it's not particularly good because it's not actually in keeping with this zigzag of 109. Because what you actually want is to keep this going all the way through. And so we add the first hydrogen there then the rest falls into place hydrogen there, hydrogen there it doesn't really matter if you put these the other way around but generally speaking that's closer to you, that's further away it just looks a little bit better this, it's pretty irrelevant really so we continue to add the bromine here and then we'll put these on here, so we have our molecule okay then, now that's how you basically develop from this 2D molecule to a 3D molecule but as you can see that's taken us quite a few minutes so you'll need to click on the next step which actually shows you how you develop this into a bit of a quicker structure to draw